Okay guys, welcome to this year 9 testing conjectures a worksheet video. Okay, solution walkthrough from the White Rose Maths okay, um, website. Okay, so this video I have recorded it already, but last time there was no audio. So I'm re-recording it this time here with some audio. So hopefully this time the video makes sense and I'll try, try to obviously link that video with this one here. Just obviously coincide with that video, okay? As ever guys, please feel free to obviously go, go ahead guys yeah, and obviously press pause. Try and attempt all the questions or the ones you can do or feel comfortable with and then come back and press play and check your answer or answers along with me and please do take any appropriate or applicable notes for today's video. Okay, so this is obviously aimed at year 9, but this is also appropriate for year 10, year 11, and even year 8, and, and even year 7 maths. Okay, we're going to start with question number 1. Circle the prime numbers. Now, the definition of a prime number is it has precisely or explicitly two factors, 1 and itself. Itself cannot obviously be 1. Okay, yeah, so... The most common misconception is that 1 is a prime number. So 1 is not a prime number because 1 only has one factor, namely 1. Okay, so 1 only has one factor. A prime number has to have explicitly two factors. So it's not 1. 2 is a prime, okay, because 2 has two factors, 1 and 2. 1 and itself. 3 is also a prime, okay, because, yeah, the factors of 3 are 1 and 3. 11 is also a prime. Okay, 21 is not prime because it's divisible by 3 and 7, as well as 1 and 21. So 21 actually has four factors, so 21 is not prime. Okay, similarly, 35 is not prime because it's divisible by 5 and 7, as well as 1 and 35. Okay, yeah, so 35 is not prime, guys. Okay, sorry about, about my handwriting, guys. Yeah, I am trying to obviously do it on like a little pad here, so forgive me yeah, for my handwriting here. Okay, question number two, decide if each statement is true or false, explain your answers, all the factors of 20 are less than 20. Well, that's not true because a factor of 20 is itself, so factors of 20 is 20, okay, and 20 is not less than 20, okay, so therefore that is false, okay, so I'll put a little line there, okay, to mean that it's not, okay, so that is false, okay. All the other factors, so all the other remaining factors, are less than 20. That is true. However, 20 is a factor of itself because 20 goes into 20 once, okay, or one time, or one times. Okay, this next one, multiples of 4 are also multiples of 2, so that is that is true, okay, and I can obviously prove it algebraically because it will be in the form 4n, okay, multiples of 4, yeah, will be in the form form for n where n is an integer and i can divide that by two okay and i would get two n okay which is a multiple of two okay if you're not sure yeah obviously yeah, obviously check out this proof proof here actually yeah but again the four times table are as follows 4 8 12 16 20 24, 28, 32, so on and so forth, 36, 40, 44, 48, so on and so forth, okay, and they're all, yeah, obviously even as well, okay, so that obviously proves that they are multiples of 2, okay, x equals 5 is the solution to the equation, 12 subtract x equals 7, well that is true, yes, because 12 take away 5, is equal to 7, okay, remember that minus x will obviously be, yeah, obviously minus 5 in this case. Yeah, I'm, I'm subtracting 5. So that is true. Okay. Question number 3, guys. Are these statements always true, sometimes true, or never true? Circle your answer and explain your reasoning. Multiples of 3 are odd. Well, that's sometimes true, okay? Because the... Time, time tables here, it would be 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So they actually alternate, okay, between even and odd, even and odd, even and odd, okay. So it's not, it's never true, it's not, it's always true, it's sometimes true, okay, because it's half, half, okay, in this context. 
key. This next one, when you add two prime numbers, the answer is even. So let's just take an example. Two is prime, okay? Three is prime, so two plus three is five. Okay, so straight away, yeah, I have actually disproved that here with one example. Let's try like another one. Three plus five is eight, so it is sometimes true, okay? What about two plus seven, even two plus five? Okay, 2, 2 plus 7 obviously yeah, will obviously equal to 9. Yeah. Okay. So it is sometimes true, yeah, because obviously I managed to prove it for one case. So it's sometimes true, okay, because it's true for this one here. Okay. And if I had, let's say, 7 plus 3, that would equal to 10, which is even. Okay. So, yeah, I've, I've proved it for, like, two cases. But, okay, but the rest, yeah, are actually odd. So, 2 plus 7 is 9, okay? Sorry about my handwriting, guys. Hopefully, you can forgive me. Question number 4. Show that 10% of 50 is equal to 1 third of 15. So, let, left hand side first. 10% of 50. So, 10% of any quantity means I divide it by 10. So, 50 divided by 10 is just equal to 5. So, on the left hand side, I will get 5. On the right hand side, a third of 15. Well, this is a fraction of an amount. Okay, I divide by the bottom and then multiply by the top. Divide by the bottom and then times by the top. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. Okay, so on the left hand side here we have 5. On the right hand side we have 5. So we have 5 is equal to 5. Therefore that statement is true. Okay, 10% of 50 is equal to, i.e. the same as, a third of 15. Okay, 10% of any quantity means divide the quantity by 10. And a third of any quantity means divide the quantity by 3. Okay, that's a fraction of an amount. We divide by the denominator and then we multiply by the numerator. So divide by the bottom and then times by the top, guys. Question number five. Okay, expand this single bracket. So I do four times x, which is going to be four x. And then I do four multiplied by positive three, which is going to be positive 12. So we're going to have four x plus 12, guys. Okay, and that's how we expand single brackets. Okay, this next one, expand x lots of x plus 4, close brackets. Well, x times x, remember, yeah, is equal to x squared. Okay, it's not equal to 2x. Okay, that's a very common, you know, like, misconception. Okay, like, student misconception. x times x is x squared. x plus x is 2x. Okay, yeah, so listen to that carefully. So, x times x, x multiplied by x is equal to x squared. And then x multiplied by positive 4 is going to be positive 4x. So we're going to have x squared plus 4x. Guys, again, that's how we do that one there. Okay. You'll have to feel my hand right now here, guys. I apologize. Expand and simplify this double bracket. Well, I'm going to use, yeah, essentially like the hook method, yeah, or like the foil method. So first, okay, inner, outer, last. Okay, so following the arrows. Okay, so x times x is going to be x squared. Okay, x times positive 7 is going to be positive 7x. So first, outer, inner, last. Okay, using foil. Okay, 5 times x is equal to 5x. And 5 times positive 7 is going to be positive 35. Okay. Sorry guys about this being a bit slower than usual. Okay, I'm now going to simplify this by collecting like terms. 7x plus 5x is going to be 12x. So our final answer will be x squared plus 12x plus 35, guys. Okay, for that, okay. So 
so that's how to expand double brackets. Question number six. It says Nija is investigating the sequence given by the rule 4n plus 1. She makes two conjectures. So conjectures just means like a prediction, okay? Test the two conjectures to see if she's correct here. Or, or, or in this context here, like it's, it's like what we call like a prediction statement, okay? All the terms in the sequence are odd, okay? So when I sub in n equals 1, I get 4 plus 1, which is going to be 5. Okay, when I sub in n equals 2, I'm going to get 9. When n is 3, I'm going to get 13. When n is 4, 4 times 4 is going to be 16 plus 1. It's going to be 17. Okay, so that is true. Yes, yes, so that is correct. Okay, so that is true. Okay. This next one, 203, is not to term in the sequence. Well, I'm going to equate the expression to 203 and then solve for n. If n is an integer, when I solve this linear equation, then it proves that 203 is in my sequence. If n is not an integer, then she is correct, okay? Or he is correct, okay, depending on the gender. Okay, subtract 1, subtract 1. We get 4n is equal to 202, okay, so a half of 202 is going to be 101, okay, so n is not equal to an integer, okay, 202 quarters, okay, you can pick it into the calculator if you're not sure, okay, half it and then half it again, Half of 200 is going to be 100. Half of 2 is going to be 1. So, yeah. So, it's 101. And then if you half 101, then I get um, 50.5. Okay. So, yes. She is correct. Okay, yeah. So, so both conjectures, okay, are correct. Okay. That she makes. Okay. For that one. Okay. Question number seven. The shapes highlighted on the grid L8 and L27. Okay. The total of the numbers L8, okay, is 53. Okay, find the total numbers, total of the numbers L27. Okay, so, yeah, so it's just adding up these four numbers, okay, but watching it carefully. Oops, sorry. So we've got 27 plus 33. So let's just work that out first to make it a bit easier for us. Oh, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll just do it in one go here to make it a bit more interesting. I was about to say fruit actually, but then I apologise. That, that might not be appropriate to say. Sorry, ever. I think I'm getting too excited about maths, so I'm just using random words there. So forgive me there for thinking of the word fruity there. I don't know why I thought about that. Seven plus three is ten. Plus four is going to be fourteen. Plus five is going to be nineteen. So nine carry the one. Three plus three plus three plus three is going to be twelve. Plus one is going to be um, four. So that's going to be 149. Okay. Right, okay. So, find an expression for the total of the numbers LX. Okay, so, the way this works is, okay, you start with X, okay, then you're going to be adding on, well, if I look at the difference between 27 and 33, that'll be 6. So, it'd be x plus 6 okay plus x plus 7 okay plus x plus 8 okay and this is just come from so we are obviously adding up okay the, the total numbers so from 27 to 33, we are adding 6. From 27 to 34, we are adding 7. And from 27 to 35, we are adding 8. Hence where these numbers have come from, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. Collecting like terms, I've got 1x, 2x, 3x, and 4x. So I'm going to have 4x there. 6 plus 7 is going to be 13. 13 plus 8 is going to be 21. So we're going to have 4x plus 21. 
key and that would be our final answer for like the general nth term of this lx yeah like sequence or iteration we can call it okay if the grid was continued which shape would have a total of 533 okay so i'm going to equate the expression so let's just delete that actually yeah so i'm going to equate the expression Okay, so I'm going to equate 4x plus 21 equal to 533. Three. I'm going to obviously solve this yeah, algebraically by subtracting 21 on both sides and then dividing 3 by 4. So I'm going to get 4x is equal to, so I'm going to have to grab my calculator here in a second. So 4x is equal to 500 and... Um, 12, if I'm not actually mistaken, so taking off 2 from there, and then 1 from there, yep, so 512, and then divide that by 4, okay, so yeah, we'll just do, do like a little bus stop method, or, or you can do it in your calculator, okay, so 4s into 5 go once with 1 remainder, 4s into 11 go twice, with three left over or three remainder, fours into 32 go eight times. Okay, so 128, 128, okay, for that one, okay. So you'll be adding up, okay, 128, then you'll be adding up 134 because you're adding six to it, so 128, 134. 135 and 136 and that will give you the total of 533 okay so that is your little l shape okay so it's 128 134 135 and 136 guys yes yeah, so you obviously start on 128 there okay and then you can obviously fill in the rest okay oops that's a bit small there yeah but what would you say 128 there okay we'll, we'll make this a bit more bigger Maybe not. Like that, there we go. Just delete this. And just extend this. There we go. Oh, shit. It, it, yes, it's, it's meant to go there, actually, but you get the idea. Okay. Okay, so that's that part there. Okay. Right, this last question here. So looking at next extra question here, fraction of an amount. We have to work out 5 sevenths of 168. So I'm going to do 168 divided by 7 and then multiply it by 5 okay so using the bus stop method okay so getting some good practice with, with our division and our times tables sevens into one i cannot do okay carry the one sevens into 16 go twice with two left over sevens into 28 go four times so that works out one seventh and i'll now do 24 okay multiply it by the numerator so divide by the denominator and then multiply by the numerator. Okay. Four times five is going to be 20. So zero carry the two. Five times two is 10 plus the two is going to be 12. Okay. So our final answer is 120. Okay. And that's just an extra practice question on fraction of an amount. We divide by the bottom and then multiply by the top. Okay, right guys, that's the end of today's video looking at year nine testing conjecture, okay, for white rose maths. Hopefully you found it useful. Okay, sorry if, if I spoke actually a bit quick there. Any point. Okay, any questions, any queries, put it in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, take care. All the best guys for summer. I hope you're having a fantastic summer holiday. And I'll see you all inside the next video. Okay, bye for now. Take care. All the best guys. Speak soon.